guys. Okay, so I wanted to do a video today on um, female covert narcissists. I have been getting this question a lot lately. Just really in the past week or so, I have been getting just this landslide of emails from men who um, you know, are wanting more clarity about what they're going through and what they can expect to go through. And if women operate in the same way that that the men, the you know, male narcissists do. And, um, you know, in wanting me to point out that men go through this type of abuse too. And I just want to say, yes, 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 you guys do. Please, I, I'm so sorry if it's been, um, you know, all of my videos have been really geared more towards my experience, more towards what women go through. That's just the background that I have as, um, you know, with my own personal life, as well as working in domestic violence shelters. So I, and honestly, when I started doing these videos, I really kind of did, it was, it was more for me, it was kind of more therapeutic. I didn't really expect anyone outside of maybe my mom and my best friend to really be watching them. So I am so sorry if I haven't accurately um, represented what you guys are going through because you guys go through a lot. So I'm going to be making a concerted effort from here on out to be talking more about what men experience, okay? so. Um, hang in there and I, again I apologize I just I just didn't expect to have this kind of response to my videos so um, so yes so what men go through female okay so all of the red flags that I've done so far and there will be about 50 or so in all I think I'm up to number 32 right now I try to put out a new red flag video every week um, men go through pretty much the same things that women go through so female covert narcissists, they do the love bombing, they do the rushing intimacy, they do the, you know, fragmented relationships, they do the, um, you know, unusual amount of crazy people in their past. All, all of these red flags, the, you know, a lot of, um, you know, sex addiction, a lot of cheating, a lot of lying, a lot of stealing, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of erratic behavior. Um, smear campaigns, flying monkeys, everything, everything that I've talked about, women do it too. I will say that the added challenge that I would say most men probably have is that in the eyes of society, um, it's society has this view of what abuse looks like, right? And the view is that it's a man, a big man, right? A big man, a big man who is being physically abusive to a smaller woman. And it only seems to count as, or register in society's mind as abuse if that woman is getting punched in the face and she has a very visible black eye. So anything outside of that is not considered abuse by the large majority of people. But we all know that that's not true, right? There's multiple types of abuse out there. There's, you know, there's physical, there's financial, there's emotional, there's psychological, there's sexual, there's, uh, I would say that there's even spiritual. So um, men go through this too. However, men are kind of the silent victims in all of this because it's again, it's a social construction that if a woman, if a woman is you know, like an overt narcissist and she's just considered very grandiose and very arrogant and very self-serving, that she's just labeled a bitch, right? And nobody's really shocked. Oh yeah, uh, you know that's John. He's just married to a bitch. And the reality is, no, John is married to a, a woman who's very, very emotionally and probably financially and verbally, all these different ways, are very abusive to him. So society doesn't, it doesn't really register with them when men are being abused. Even if men are being hit, it's, it's this idea of, well, you can't be abused because you're a man, you're bigger and stronger than her. So how, do, how can this happen? Um, but of course, a lot of men that are being physically abused are being physically abused because they don't want to lay a hand on her um, because they know that they are bigger and stronger or they don't want charges pressed against them or they know that she's really unpredictable and they don't know how to react to the situation and she just keeps pursuing them. So, you know, other things that men go through with female covert narcissists, if they're covert, they're probably very charming. So to everybody else, they might come across as a really great mom, a really even a really great wife, um, a really great neighbor, a volunteer, kind of this all all around great person, and only maybe their spouse and their children know the truth. And so it can be a very isolating feeling when nobody's believing them. Um, it's not uncommon for women to, you know, if the man tries to leave to file false charges, 
saying that he's been abusive to them or abusive to the children. Um, I've heard stories where men have been thrown in jail before for charges that they claim were, were not true. Um, I, you know, it's not uncommon too when women get to court that they, they are able to spin the situation. They're able, again, to charm the judge, to charm attorneys, to charm even family members of the, the victim into thinking that the victim is the bad guy. And of course, women tend to get full custody of the kids more often than men. So it's it's a very emotional, very intense, very um, it's a it's a big struggle for a lot of men to go through this with women because they're just they're really not um, believed to the extent that female victims are believed. So if you are going through this with a female narcissist, you know, my advice to you would be to keep to keep a paper trail of everything, to save t text messages, um, you know, to, to really treat all communication with these people as if you are going to have to defend yourself in court against them one day. That's really probably the best way to go about it because they're so charming that people are going to have a hard time understanding or believing where you're coming from. So keep a paper trail, um, make, go to an extra effort. She's going to be telling people that you are crazy or that you're violent or whatever. So make that concerted effort to not act crazy. She's probably going to be provoking you to prove a point to other people that, yeah, see, look, he is crazy. So you're going to have to calm yourself down, which I know is not easy when you're being provoked and you're the victim. It's adding insult to injury. I, I get that. Um, but to just act cool, calm and collected, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things, know what you're up against ahead of time, know that you're not dealing with a person who's playing fair and realize that you are indeed playing a game. So you're gonna to have to kind of play it to win on your own terms. And I recommend, you know, play it, of course, play it legally, play it morally, play it ethically, um, but prepare yourself for the worst, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best kind of a thing. So keeping a paper trail, um, being smart, you know, changing the locks to your house if she moves out, going the extra mile to not engage with her, to not, you know, speak to her, to avoid as much unnecessary communication as possible. Be aware of, you know, what is hoovering? What are flying monkeys? What is a smear campaign? I've done videos on all these things. So kind of prepare yourself for what could potentially happen down the road and then reverse engineer it, okay? So you can prepare yourself emotionally. That way, when these things, if these things do happen, you're not so caught off guard that you can't think straight and that you're in a more of like a reactive type mode. That's what my goal for you would be is to where you're more proactive instead of reactive. That That's really the key to, to handling highly manipulative people is you want to maintain your own power and control in the situation and, and not just be so reactive all the time because that's really what they're going for is to just to get you to get thrown off balance and to be reactive to them. So don't do that um, if you can avoid it. And I, I, I said it, you know, it's again, it's really hard and, and you're not alone in that. So um, lots of men, you know, do suffer at the hands of female covert narcissists and you're so not alone. I would say probably, you know, statistics are somewhere around the like 75% of narcissists are men. I would, my guess is that it's probably a lot, It's it's, underdiagnosed and it's misdiagnosed. So my guess is that, especially when it comes to male victims, my guess is it's probably closer to like 50-50 is my guess, maybe even 60-40. So 60% um, being men, 40%, well, 60% female victims is what I mean, so, you know, so okay. But it's, it's hard to say, it's about equal. I mean, that's about what I see with all the emails that I'm getting is that there's a large percentage of them that are men. So, which tells me that the reported statistics out there are wrong. So just know that you're not alone. Try to find a good support group. There's a handful of men that are in my support group. Um, you know, you are very much welcome in there. So I'll put all that contact info down below and, um, you know, just be good to yourself. Try to find the support that you need. Try to find ideally a therapist that is familiar with narcissistic abuse and that can help kind of guide you through. Again, support groups are a fantastic way to get the support you need to get a lot of answers, to get a lot of clarity. Um, so that's, that's that. So I hope that helps. You guys take care. Love to you all. You will get through this. Um, this, you know, this will eventually pass and you won't always 
feel this emotional and this intense and this sad. Okay, so hang in there and I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye.